Hey friends, welcome back to She's At It Again. My name is Tanya, and this is the first video in a series of hopefully comprehensive instructions on how to make sourdough bread, and this is from scratch. I don't mean order a starter. I don't mean borrow a starter from your friend. This is from scratch, and the only things you're gonna need right now, other than a digital scale, is clean water, which is not chlorinated. I use a Berkey water filter, but you can buy water or you can just use tap water and leave it sitting out open for a few days so it can get all that chlorine out of it. You'll also need good flour. You can use whole wheat flour if you want. I use unbleached plain flour. I use organic, but use what you have. And this is how we're gonna get started. Super simple. We're gonna do day by day. I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's being fed. The nice thing about sourdough bread, other than the fact it's very gut healthy, as far as <laughs> on the spectrum of all breads, sourdough bread is very healthy because it's fermented. And basically what that means is something else has already digested it for you a lot before it ever goes into you. The other thing is where you make this depends uh, well, let me, let me back up. The flavor of this depends on where you make it. If I live in San Francisco and I'm getting those salt sea breezes off the Pacific Northwest uh, water area, it's going to taste different than if I make this in, say, northern Mississippi. I live in uh, kind of northeastern central Arkansas, and it tastes different than if it would if I took the exact same ingredients and made it somewhere else. It all depends on the wild yeast in your area and just different factors like that. It's just so interesting to do. I will have some pictures posted on here of breads I've made in the past. They're just so pretty, it's almost like a work of art and you wanna take a picture of them, not just because you think, oh, people can definitely see that this is good taste in bread, but they're just so beautiful. They're very rustic, but I'm gonna to try to, again, make this as comprehensive as I can and not long and drawn out, which I'm sorry, I'm just long-winded. I'm trying to explain things. But if you have questions, by all, mean, all means, ask them in the comments and I will respond as quickly as I can. I have been making sourdough bread for probably three years now, I'm guessing, three or four years. And it's just something I do on a regular basis. I never, I never buy bread, but this is one of the breads that we make. Um, You'll need just a clear jar, and again, your scale. I do not keep my battery in my scale all the time just because I think there's a little bit of draining of the battery that runs down. So I keep it in the box with the scale, and I just put it in when I get ready to use it. I have another camera sitting right here so you can get a different angle of it. I just wanna show you what's going on. <clears throat> We're gonna turn our scale on and we're gonna set it to grams. It measures in fluid ounces, pounds and ounces, all that different thing, but you'll want it to measure in grams. So we're gonna just start by putting maybe 45, let's go with 45 grams. I just wanna get a little bit of water in there. This is not necessarily scientific how much you start with, but it does matter how much of each you put in there. In other words, if you have 45 grams of water, you want exactly 45 grams of flour. So we're gonna get some flour. I'll dip it out of my container over here. And if somebody says, oh, I don't have a scale, I'll just use a spoon. Go ahead, but um, it's just not advised. So we're gonna tear this out, T-A-R-E. So we're gonna zero it out basically. And we want 45 grams of flour in there, just put a little bit at a time. Okay, exactly 45. get a spatula. That's all we'll need the scale for today. And again, I just take my battery out when I'm done with it. 
put it in the box. We're going to stir this up. The wild yeast is already in your flour, but you're also going to capture some in the air as this sits and feeds for about 24 hours. Now I may come back in 24 hours and they may, there may not be any bubbles in this whatsoever, or I may come back and it's been super active. That's why you keep it in a glass jar because you want to be able to see how far it has bubbled up, if it does, overnight or over how long the sitting period is, and then gone back down. So we're going to take a cloth. You can use a paper towel or you can use a cloth. This is just a cloth that, just a circle of fabric I made to keep over my kefir when I make it or my kombucha. Put some kind of elastic around there. And you can see what this looks like. It's just, it's literally a blob of flour and water. Now you can take a piece of tape and mark this. I can tell that this is at the, at the bottom of the word mason on this jar. So if it's climbed up the edge at all, I'll be able to see that and then it'll go back down. So we're going to come back tomorrow. We're going to check this. We're going to do a discard, feed it again, and I'll let you see the details of that. So stick with us. This is day two and this is our jar that we started yesterday. I'll take the cover off and as you can see there's little to no action in there. So what I'm going to do is I have a different jar, clean jar. I don't really have to weigh that yet. I'm going to take a couple of tablespoons of this. See how sticky that is? Woo! And even though I called what's left in here discard, I'm really not going to discard it. I'm going to hang on to it, put it in a separate container, and I save it for making granola. That will be one of the recipes. That will be one of the first recipes I show you after I show you how to make sourdough bread with the starter. And it's really, really good. The, um, the sourdough starter makes it clump together in bigger chunks so it doesn't look like just a bag of gravel when you open it up. And it gives it a slight tanginess to the flavor, although it makes it not gluten-free, even though you're using gluten-free ingredients in it, for the most part, um, it does render it having gluten in it now. Okay, so there's our two tablespoons of starter. And we're going to turn our scale on here. We'll turn it to grams. So at this, at this time, I don't really know how much this weighs, and it doesn't matter. It, I just know it has an equal amount of water and flour in it. So let's add, oh, it really doesn't matter when you do this. You just want to make sure you have equal amounts per, by weight of water and flour. So let's go with, let's go with 25 grams. Let me get a spoon so I can get this out a little easier. So 25 grams, we'll tear it out here. Oops, I got 26. I bet I can get some of that out of there. There we go, now we're at 25. You really do have to be super careful about getting it the same amount. Okay, so we have our mixture here. I'm gonna use the handle of the spatula, give that a stir. So this is day two. Our starter has been fed. And hopefully we'll get some action with some bubbles by tomorrow. But because the weather is cool right now, I think this actually, the fermentation process probably 
goes a little more quicker when the weather is warm and it's not warm now. It's warm inside my house, but it's not warm outside. Okay, we're gonna put our cover back on this. Set this on the counter and that's our day two. So we'll see you tomorrow. It is day three on our sourdough starter and I haven't looked at this yet. Ah, okay. Let me give you a look at this. Hopefully you can see the bubbles in there. There's kind of a dry spot in the middle of it, but I'm thinking it's probably because I have a fabric cover on it. It's a little porous and it's maybe just drying out a bit. Some of the humidity's evaporating out of it. All right, I'm gonna take part of this out as my discard. Poke that down in there. It definitely has a fermented smell to it. It is not a bad smell. Trust me, I'll tell you if it was a bad smell. It's not a bad smell. It's, it's almost like, um, it's almost like the smell of buttermilk. So if that tells you anything. If you're familiar with buttermilk, if you'll notice, I had, I have a rubber band on here marking what my level was. I'll have to move it in just a minute once I put my other ingredients in there, but we're going to set our scale for grams again. And it's at zero. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Yesterday we put 25 grams of each water and flour. Let's shoot for that today. Ooh, sometimes a drop makes all the difference in the world. I'm taking a little bit of that out. Okay, we're right at 25. <laughs> it's so weird to be that particular about something, but in this case, I am. Okay, 25 grams of water. Tear it out there. And we're going to put 25 grams of flour in. Sometimes if you just let it sit there a second, it'll change a number. Okay, so we're good on that. I'm gonna use my spoon that I took it out with. We're gonna stir it up. So this is only day three and we already have fermenting action going on there. I think that's pretty cool. So from what I understand, and of course this is being self-educated by YouTube, I guess. But from what I understand, there are bacteria in here at this point that aren't necessarily as valuable in the bread making as ones that will come later on, say in about five to six days, or five, five to eight days, I think they said. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep feeding this every day. And at about the, oh, I don't know. I don't know. What, it'll really depend more on my schedule when I can do it because I'm not going to do it on a day where I have to get up and go somewhere early the next morning. But we're supposed to have cold weather next week, so probably next week in the middle of the week we'll go ahead and make a loaf of bread with some of our starter. And that's pretty exciting. I'm excited to show you that. I've been thinking about this ever since I started my YouTube channel, but it just takes such a long drawn out time to do this. So that's the reason I haven't done it yet. But hopefully by next week we'll be making some bread with this. And lucky for you, all this happens in one video instead of being drawn out for weeks like it is for me. Kind of impatient when it comes to that. Okay, we have this back on here. 
I'll put that rubber band about where our well, oh, sorry, you can't even see it. <laughs> I'm holding it up here thinking I have it in camera view and I don't. I'm the worst. Okay, I think I have that right about the level that our thing is on. I will write some notes on this. This is what I wrote from yesterday. Reserved two tablespoons. So we reserved about two tablespoons again and added 25 grams of each water and flour for today. So I'll write that down and... Um, We'll come back tomorrow. I'm taking my battery out of this, like I always do, to store it. Okay, we'll come back tomorrow, so hang with us. We are on day four. Day four of our starter. And this is what it looks like. Get a better shot of that. So it's still bubbly. Again, bubbly. We're going to put our discard in this. And remember, I'm not really discarding this. I'm keeping this in the refrigerator to make granola or something like that with. So we're going to try to take all of it out, but about two tablespoons. scale. I don't think you can see the scale from there, but I'm going to do the same thing I did the last couple of times. Let's see if I can get this down a little bit more. There we go. Okay, we'll put it on grams. And we're going to add, let's see, 25 grams of water. Oops. And I'm pouring it out of the jar. It's so hard to get one gram. Maybe if I... Oh, okay. It went to 25 just about the time I stopped. I don't want it to be weighing that extra water on there. Okay, we're at 25. I'm going to tear it out. And we'll put this in a little at a time. We're going to go for 25 grams of flour. Sometimes you just got to dig some out. Okay, we're at 25. All right, I'll put this around here. Hopefully you can see that. 25 grams. I'll take and stir this up. Try to get as much off the sides of it as I can just so I can kind of tell if it's bubbled up and gone back down during the night. Sometimes you have to start with a fresh jar. But that's just for your benefit. It doesn't affect the sourdough starter at all. Okay. Raise up my rubber band up just a little bit. Looks like I have a little bit more than I had before. <clears throat> okay, so there's our starter again. We'll put fabric on it. Rubber band. Set it aside. Make my notes so I'll know what I've done. So we'll be back tomorrow. We are at day five. And we're going to check our starter. Same process we do every day. Just do this until we get to about day seven. So... Here's what it looks like. See if I can focus in on that. <laughs> it's so hard to get a picture when you want it. Let's see if I can do it like this. There you go. So you see the bubbles. Okay. 
I'm going to take all, about about two tablespoons, put in our discard jar, which isn't really going to be discarded, it'll be used for something. scale on, set it to grams, we'll add 25 grams of water. There's 25. Tear it. 25 grams of Flour. Okay. Stir this up. Try to clear it off the walls of the jar as much as we can. like that. We put our cover back on it and set it back up here and write a note saying what I did. We'll be back tomorrow. Okay, here we are on day one, two, three, six. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, day six. Okay, I want you to see how far up this has gone. So here's my rubber band down here. The mixture has risen to this amount, and that's what'll happen eventually with this mix. It'll rise above the rubber band or whatever you have marking it, and then it'll go back down. And what that means is it's ready to be fed from what I'm gathering, everything I'm reading on it. I mean, I've been doing this for a few years, but as far as the meaning behind everything, I just don't know. Hang on. Okay, I forgot my spatula. All right. Oh, shoot, I gotta get my jar. I I had everything I needed. All right, I'm getting quite a good mix right here in my uh, discard jar, which isn't discarded at all. Okay, let me pick this up and show this to you. This is what this looks like now. Kind of fluffy. That means it's just super active, which that's what we want. So we're gonna give this another day before we make anything out of it, at least another day. All right, I'm gonna pour everything but about two tablespoons into the discard container. super bubbly. Okay, that smells really, really good. Your sourdough starter will start to smell tangy, and when I say tangy, I mean like a yogurt or something like that smells tangy, but if it smells funky, that is not right. That needs to be discarded right away, but we hope that that's not going to happen. All right, get the sides of the jar as clean as I can. I'll put 
put my jar right there. And I'll have to, uh, that looks like more than two tablespoons. I'm gonna take a little bit more of that out. Am I the only one, but can y'all go all day long without getting a text, but you start doing something like filming or doing something where you need it to be quiet and you get a text? Okay, so I'm the only one. All right, I think that looks closer to two tablespoons. All right, we're gonna turn our scale on. Set it to grams. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a little G right there. Okay, let me get this situated where you can see it better. Sorry about the horrible camera handling. I don't know what I'm doing, so that's my reason for it. We're gonna put 25 grams of flour. I usually put the water in there first, but it really doesn't matter which order you put them in. grams of water in there. Okay, well, shoot, it's 26. Oh well, we'll just say that's the grace period right there. Clean the edge off as much as I can. I know you probably can't see what I'm doing over here. Basically, we're just doing the same routine every single day for about seven days. Then that's when the action starts. So I'm not, I mean, yes, I make apologies for being horrible at filming this, but I'm really not making apologies because you know what I did every other day and it's just the same thing. You discard some, you reserve about two tablespoons, you add about 25 grams, and I'm just making up that number. You can add however much you want. I'm just trying to keep from wasting so much flour. All right. I'm going to put our cover back on it. Equal amounts of flour and water. And that still looks like that's about to that height right there. So we'll set this over here. And what I've been doing the last couple of times is putting this lid on it just as a moisture barrier so it doesn't dry out in there. So that's where it sits right there. There's my onions over there that I'm keeping alive till I can poke them in some soil. So here's our starter. Tomorrow will be our last day to do this and then we'll start making some bread. So I'm looking forward to that. All right, friends, we are on day seven of our sourdough starter and I just put my battery in my scale. We're gonna turn this on. We're gonna start our dough tonight for our sourdough bread. So this is just in preparation for that. It is, um, it's almost nine o'clock in the morning right now, but I want this starter to get super active today to make the bread starting this evening. So this is gonna be overnight sourdough bread. So I'll tear this out. When I say tear it out, I just mean zero it out. <clears throat> Set it to grams again. And what we wanna do is find out how much 
starter we have in here. We're not going to do any discard today. We are simply going to add all the starter to this and then we're going to add equal amounts of flour and water to whatever we have. I'm going to take a speck of that out because it's right at 100 grams right there. That's pretty cool. I couldn't have planned that if I'd have wanted to. So to 100 grams, we don't necessarily have to tear it out. I can just add 100 to it. I know what 100 plus 100 is. So we're going to add 100 grams of water to it. Okay, we're right at 200, and then we want to add 100 grams of flour to it. So when we get to 300, we'll be good. Okay, we're at 300 right there. I'm going to stir this up and again take my battery out. I always take the battery out. Set that aside. So during the day today, because my house is a bit warmer during the day, of course, than it is at night, this is going to really get active. And again, it has a great smell to it. Just a tart smell, like the smell of buttermilk or yogurt, but not anything funky or skanky. We do not want funky or skanky. So up until now, we've had pretty much zero waste on this because we've saved all our discard because we'll make something out of it later. But for right now, This is going to get super active today. We'll come back this afternoon. And I'm just trying to figure out how to put my camera so y'all can see it better. I'm not interested in, <laughs> I'm certainly not interested in getting a video shot of me in it. I want to show you what this looks like and I want to do it comprehensive and I want to do it concise enough to where you don't sit there and go, come on, come on, come on, shut up. Quit talking. But. I don't want to miss any details. I don't want you to be going, wait a minute, she didn't explain this or she didn't explain that. So for right now, I'm going to get a shower cap and put over this because that's what I always put over my starter when I am making bread. It keeps any dust or bugs. Of course, we don't have bugs. It's winter time right now. Have any bugs in it, but we want to put it in that. It kind of keeps the humidity in there, but we're going to leave it sitting right here on the counter and it'll stay nice and warm and I'll get this washed up because it has some starter on the side of it. Anyway, we'll come back this afternoon and we'll start filming the mixing up of the starter with the flour and salt and water. It's incredible. This, this sourdough bread has, of course, flour and water to make the starter. You add more flour, you add more water and salt. There's no fat, no sugar, no anything else in this bread. It's so incredibly good. So. I can't wait to show it to you, so come back in just a bit. All right, here we go. This is a bowl that I don't normally use. I'm using a clear one just so you can simply see the contents of it. The bowl I normally use is big and blue and it's beautiful and it's my bread bowl, but we're gonna make it in this one and it'll be fine. Let's turn our scale on. My starter has gotten really, really active today, so that's pretty exciting. Okay, we are gonna turn our scale to measure grams. 
And the first thing we want to do is start with our bubbly starter here. That is some bubbly starter right there. Look at that. That is a healthy starter. That's what you want yours to look like. And we only need 50 grams out of this. Now, it's going to look like so minimum, and you'll be thinking, uh, I think she's mistaken about this, but trust me on this one, it's 50 grams. The remaining starter you're going to put in a jar in the refrigerator. This is the part I want you to pay attention to because even though people say, oh, sourdough starter is so hard to keep up with, you have to feed it all the time. If you put it in the refrigerator, you feed it about once a week. If you go two weeks, uh, I can't guarantee that nothing's going to happen, but I've gone two weeks and nothing happened. I fed it after two weeks. You just do the same thing we did with the starter each day. You discard a certain amount, and I'll tell you about that later. Discard a certain amount, feed it equal amounts of flour and water, stir it, let it sit on the counter to where it rises up, and then it goes back down, and then you put it back in the refrigerator. So that's all there is to it. But if you're like me, you're going to find so many things to make with it that you just kind of keep it going. You never really throw out your discard. Even if you feed it to the chickens. If you have friends with chickens, chickens love this, and it's actually supposed to be healthy for their gut, so it just never goes to waste. All right, we're going to put 50 grams of starter in our bowl. If you go over, you can always dig it out. That's the nice thing about it. Ignore my oven, I'm heating up leftovers for dinner. And ignore the noise in the background because my husband just took the doggies out and they're coming back in. All right, so this will go back in the refrigerator. I'm just gonna set it aside for right now. Cover it up so it doesn't dry out. Let's set our scale to zero still in grams. If I can get it back to there, I accidentally hit the wrong button. Okay, grams, 350 grams of water. Now this needs to be non-chlorinated water. So if you need to buy um, some kind of store-bought water or if you have a Berkey water filter, that's great, but just some kind of water. If you, uh, if you don't have access to store-bought water and you don't have a Berkey, if you'll take your water in a large bowl with a large surface area, put a lot of it in there and let the chlorine evaporate out overnight for just, you know, several hours, then it should be fine. But chlorine, I've heard, will kill your starter. I can't guarantee that because it's never happened to me because I don't have chlorinated water because I use that out of the Berkey. All right, 350 grams of water. And just watch your scale. When it gets close to it, just slow down. Just give that a stir. To this, we're going to add 500 grams of flour. So zero it out. I simply use organic unbleached flour. This is a store brand from my big store, so that gives you enough information right there, but use what you have.
see the 500 grams. I'm hoping you can see that. I can't really see because there's a reflection on the screen, but I'm hoping you can see it. I'm going to put my bowl over here. The uh, salt, I always think, oh, it's so sensitive it can't measure it. It really can, but I just put my salt in something different to measure it out just in case because I can't really dig it out without digging that flour too. Zero out your scale. And we need nine grams of salt. top of there. Again, I take my battery out every time I put this up. I put my box in the drawer, so I'm just going to set that aside. And that is all your ingredients right there. Now, I will add a little bit more flour after a while, but for right now, we're just going to rough stir this until as much of the moisture is distributed throughout as you can get it. And I will tell you this ahead of time, this bowl, uh, I'm sorry, this dough actually never touches the counter. And you'll see what I mean. So don't worry about having a nice flat surface or some big area where you have to roll things out. I have the absolute luxury of having a four foot by eight foot island. And I love my island. And I very few times have I ever taken it for granted, but this is not one of the things that you need a large counter space for. So if you have a very small kitchen with a very small counter space, this is gonna be a huge success for you, I think. Because it does not require a big counter space to roll it out. This will never come out of the bowl and onto the counter. It'll only go out of the bowl onto a Dutch oven or a pan to cook it in. But it won't touch the counter. Okay, I think you can see what I mean by just a rough stir to this. It's not consistently moist throughout but we'll work on that part when we add more flour to it later on. What we're going to do at this point is, let me show this to you. i got to get that off there. What we're going to do at this point is we're going to take our dough, cover up the bowl with a shower cap. I'll get that. We're going to let this rest for, you can, you can do it for 30 minutes. I tend to go more toward an hour, but anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour, we're going to let this rest. And when we come back, we're going to add about a half a cup of flour to it. Then we're going to start our mixing in the bowl. Never take it out of the bowl under the counter, but we're going to need this in the bowl and then get ready to let it rest overnight. So we'll be back in just a bit. Okay, we are back. It has probably been, uh, I don't know, over an hour, maybe less than two hours. I'm not even sure. Okay, this is what our dough looks like. See how wet it is in parts? Make sure you can see that clearly. <coughs> this is really, really wet. So what's happened is the wheat flour has, or the white flour, but it's wheat flour, has absorbed some of the liquid and it's in a relaxed state. So it's almost like, oh, I'm so full, I can't get any more liquid in me. So we're going to add more flour to it to even that out. This is a level half cup of flour. Now, you're not going to measure this in grams. You can if you want to just to see what it weighs. But just a level half cup of flour in addition to that should be enough. I normally shake it to cover the top. 
and I have a plastic bench scraper here. That is one of the handiest tools I've ever bought at a um, kitchen supply store. It cost 75 cents and I splurged and bought two of them. So it's one of my favorites. So you're going to go around and just scrape the sides of this. If you are familiar with bread baking, this is not going to be anything new to you. You're probably going to wonder, why am I showing this to you? But for those who are starting out and want to try it and are afraid to, this is for you. I'm just going to take and try to coat all the outside of it with the flour. So I'm just kind of pushing the flour underneath it as I go. Now I'll get my hands in it just a minute. I just want to coat it first of all before I get my hands in it because otherwise it'll stick to my hands. And again, this dough does not come out and get kneaded on the countertop. It gets kneaded in the bowl. So the entire purpose of this step is to incorporate that half cup of flour into this ball of dough that you've started. And although it seems at first like that's not going to all go in there, there's too much flour, it goes in there beautifully and it's the perfect consistency. So whatever your method is to kneading dough, just do it inside the bowl. I have several ways of doing it. I take and pull the outside to the inside like this all the way around. And then I flip it over and I turn it under itself like that. Just keep turning it around. So I'm basically pushing the sides underneath and adding the flour to it as it goes. And every once in a while I'll grab a scoop of flour. So I'm just going to keep doing this so you can watch it, but it really doesn't need any more explanation. But I will tell you that once this step is done and we've incorporated all this flour into this dough and it's a smooth ball, smooth and consistently um, lump free, then we're going to put the shower cap back over the top. You could use a towel, a piece of cellophane wrap, whatever you have. That way it doesn't dry out. And this is going to rest and rise overnight. In the morning, I'll get up and eat breakfast, get that done, and then we'll work on this. Normally I have my bread baked by about 9 or 10 o'clock, but we'll just see how it goes tomorrow because normally I don't film that process. I just get it done. So that's why this is called overnight sourdough bread, and I have to give credit to the person that this recipe came from. Her name is Donna Schwank, S-C-H-W-E-N-K, I believe is how you spell it. She has a podcast. She probably has videos on YouTube. I'm not exactly sure how I accessed it, but her information was very valuable. She is very um, knowledgeable, and when I tried it, it worked Great, so I can only assume that um, it will work for you because I'm not that smart.
Again, just taking the sides and pushing them into the center of it. And we now have all of our flour absorbed. I'll even take with my nail and just scratch up the bits on the bottom to make sure it's in there too. So this is what our dough looks like. And I still have it on my fingers. You just got to get your hands really clean before you start messing with it because you are going to have your hands in it. Okay, this is what it looks like. Try to get a shot from both cameras. And you're not going to oil your bowl. This has no fat whatsoever in it. Okay, we're going to cover it up. This is going to sit on my counter all night long. We'll come back tomorrow morning, finish it up, and bake some sourdough bread. So stay tuned. All right, it is the next morning. It has been over 12 hours since we put our bread dough in this bowl. And I'll let you look at it before we get started. That's what it looks like. That's the big air bubbles. So what we're going to do at this point, before we ever touch it with the bench scraper, I'm going to take just roughly a tablespoon of flour, sprinkle it over the top, and kind of do like we did yesterday, just give it a good shake to coat the top of it like that. Take our bench scraper, pull it away from the bowl, and we're just going to knead this lightly, kind of like we did the last kneading last night before we covered it up. Again, just get that flour kind of mixed into this dough to where there's not any loose flour left in your bowl. will go from being super sticky to that just that one tablespoon of flour will make it to where it's easy enough to handle without sticking to your hands or the bowl either one and make sure your hands are clean because you're gonna be picking this stuff out from underneath your nails in between your fingers and all that so you don't want to transfer debris or just general dirt Onto your stuff, even though it'll be cooked still. You don't want it in there. Okay, so this is how soft and pretty that is. We're going to place it in there for just a bit, cover it up, and we're going to get our towel ready. Now, this is one of my kitchen towels that I use. I'll pick the lint off of it from the dryer. This even has a hole in it. I mean, I, these are well loved. I'll just put it like that. Okay, we're going to take and put a little bit of flour on our towel because we don't want it to stick to the towel. 
and it's just up to you how much flour you want to put on. I just put enough to where it doesn't stick to the towel. It never has stuck to the towel, but it may be because I put enough flour on it, and I'm not sure. Just don't know. Maybe I'm just lucky. Okay. Now this could sit over here for about 10 minutes and and rest like that if you want, but I'm going to just go ahead and do that for time's sake. I don't want to keep turning the video on and off and making so many segments to it. So we're going to take our bread. And just plop it down on there. Just like that. Take and kind of kick the sides up like this. Tap it to where It'll have a light dusting of flour on the top of it. Pick it up by the corners and we're going to put it back in this bowl. And you can see how that looks in there. Take your shower cap or covering, cover it back up. We're going to let this sit for an hour. In an hour, we'll come back. We're going to turn our oven on 450. In the meantime, what you need to do is take, make sure you have the racks in your oven low enough to where you can put your pot in there. Now, this is the pot we're going to cook our bread in. Let me go ahead and set my timer for this. So I've set it for an hour. This is the pot that I cook my bread in. Uh, you might have a fancy brand. This is not a fancy brand. This is something I found for literally $20 at a Ross store one time, and I thought, oh, I bet I could put that to good use. It's not great quality because there's a chip in the side of the porcelain here, which I don't even know how that happened. I probably just got rough with it one day. But this is just, uh, it's cast iron covered with porcelain. But if you have a Le Creuset, good for you. I don't. Um, but those are great quality pans. But because this is light colored inside, it eliminates the problem of this over browning when you bake it because we're gonna be baking it for about 50 minutes at a really high temperature. But if you have a cast, um, yeah, if you have a cast iron Dutch oven with a good fitting lid, if you will place it on a shiny cookie sheet or a piece of heavy duty aluminum foil on your baking rack kind of crimped on the edges where it's not going to fly up if you know if you have a convection oven or something uh, just something reflective underneath this it will prevent it from browning your bread from browning on the bottom you will need like i said a dutch oven like this with a lid this is very heavy and then you're going to need a piece of parchment i use these over and over until they just can't be used anymore just a large piece of parchment because we're going to turn this bread out onto the parchment and place it down in this to bake. So next step, you're going to need a Dutch oven and your piece of parchment that goes with it. But for right now, we're going to let this rise for an hour and then we'll come back and do our next step. We've had this rising for an hour. Our oven is preheated already. I turned it on just right before I knew that our hour was going to be up. And this is what our bread looks like. I don't know if you can see it any better over there. Probably not. <coughs> All right. Get our pan over here and ready. And this is the part that might be a little intimidating, but it actually shouldn't be. I'm going to take our parchment, place it over the bowl. We're going to invert the bowl, we're going to flip the bowl over, and turn this out onto our hand. I'm not used to doing it with this bowl, so hopefully it'll work. There we go. So it's out of the bowl, onto the parchment, take the towel off, and that's what the flour does, is just let it release easier. And you can kind of scoot it around, you don't want to deflate it but it does scoot around pretty easily if you just kind of pull that paper real quick. All right, this is just a sharp knife. I sharpen it right before I do this every time, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna slash this. There is a tool called a LAME, L-A-M-E, 
That's French word for like slash or cut, I think. I'm not actually sure. But uh, it looks like uh, something that holds an old-fashioned razor blade. But you have to need to have something very sharp, not something that's going to drag through the dough and pull it. We're going to slash it. We're going to make slashes because that gives it the extra um, freedom to rise up the way it needs to. So you can do this in any design you want to. Sometimes I make like a leaf pattern. Sometimes I just make like sunray pattern. So just whatever comes out, that's what I do. But see how easy it slashes? Do it evenly all over. And we're gonna lift this up, put it in our pan, just like that. We're gonna bake this for 20 minutes with the lid on. Then we'll come back and I'll show you taking the lid off. We're gonna bake it for 30 minutes after that. So oven's preheated. The rack on the oven is set up high. I'm gonna turn my camera up like this so you can actually see me placing it in the oven. So I took the top rack out. So the bottom rack is right there. We're gonna put this in the oven now. Set our timer for 20 minutes. And we'll be back in 20 minutes. Then we'll show you taking the lid off, put it back in there. Our timer just went off and we're gonna take our lid off of our pan. Quickly, that's what it looks like. Kind of half baked. Now we set our timer for 30 minutes. And that's when we're gonna get it out and it's gonna look so good. So you're gonna be surprised, so stay tuned. Okay, oven's going off, our bread's ready. We're gonna take it out. I'm gonna switch places with this because I want you to be able to see the bread better when it comes out. Okay, I think you can see it from there. Because you have to set your pan down on something, so have your hot pad ready, and then we're gonna transfer the bread out of the pan immediately onto the cooling rack. Otherwise, it just gets soggy on the bottom. So here's what the bread looks like in the pan. And paper is not hot. We're going to lift it out, put it on this. Set that aside and this is what our bread looks like. I don't want it to slide off but I want you to be able to see it. See where the slits were on the top of it? Let's see if I can get a better picture of this. There's where some of the slits were here and here, but I mean, it just kind of takes on a life of its own and expands a lot. All right, so I'm trying to write comprehensive and yet concise instructions on this. Go to the details um, over on the right-hand side. You know where to click on for our recipe. So the instructions are over there. If you have questions, simply comment or contact me directly, ask questions. I want you to be able to do this. I want this to be helpful. I don't want this to be like, hey, look, Tony knows how to make sourdough bread. I want, I want you to be able to, I learned how to make sourdough bread by watching this video and it was so easy, it was incredible. I make this about once a week. I keep my starter going. The next video I'm gonna do is for granola made with sourdough starter. And the reason you put that in there, it's not gluten-free at that point, but because it makes the granola stick into clumps, it's not like a, just a bag of gravel or something. There's these big clumps and you can change it up, use all the fruits and nuts and things that you want, the seeds, it's just so much fun. Everybody wants to know how to make the sourdough granola, but you have to be able to make the starter first. That's what it takes. So 
I hope this has been beneficial to you. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll try to get a picture of this once we slice it. Do not ever slice this bread when it's hot because it just makes the moisture disappear. And remember, it has no fat in it. It doesn't have any sugar, but it has no fat in it. So you're talking flour, water, and salt. That's it. And it makes this beautiful loaf of bread. This is, this is, um, this was alive before we cooked it. So that's what's so cool about it. So I want you to be able to do this, but you have questions, contact me, but I appreciate you watching as always. Thank you for being there. And, um, we look forward to sharing something again with you real soon. See ya. Okay. One more thing. Uh, we just finished our bread video. My loaf is over there cooling right now, but I did want to clarify something. When you have made your starter, once you make your bread, you're going to have starter left over and you're probably going to think she didn't tell us what to do with this. So your refrigerator is going to be like a sleep chamber for your starter. You're going to keep it in a jar. Uh, I keep mine in a, it's just a, a plastic container with a lid on it. It, I think organic ice cream, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. It's about maybe a pint big, but you're going to take your starter and keep it in that. Now it's going to go to sleep in the refrigerator. Like I said, it's going to be like a sleep chamber in the refrigerator. So what you're going to do is about once a week, you know what? I think I've left mine in there for two weeks without feeding it. So don't panic if you go over a week, but just kind of set a date where like every Saturday morning you're going to feed it or every Sunday night you're going to feed it or Monday morning first thing. But about once a week you're going to feed it. So what that entails is you're going to remove all of it that's considered your discard. Remove all of it except for four ounces. This is just kind of my rule of thumb. It's different measurement for different people, depending on really how much you use it but to keep from wasting so much of it, because I do use a lot of my discard to make other things, you'll take about four ounces, leave in the container. So start with a clean container, put four ounces in there. You're gonna add four ounces of your clean, unchlorinated water, and then four ounces of flour. Stir it up, uh, cover it, let it come to room temperature and just get bubbly and active. And once it settles back down, you can see the bubbles going back down that level of it. And then you're gonna put it back in the refrigerator to go to sleep again. Now you can use it any time throughout that week. Just kind of let it come to room temperature, maybe feed it a, maybe a, a teaspoon of each water and flour. I don't know if you just want it to get active, but I've literally taken mine out of the refrigerator, put it in the bowl and started the process of bread making. So don't get real uptight about time constraints or what you're doing. Be more focused on the purity of your water, the quality of your flour, and things like that. So you're just going to have a different experience with this probably each time you make it, but the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. You won't look at a recipe after a while. That's why you didn't see me looking at a recipe because I don't use one. I just know 50 grams of starter, 350 grams of water, 500 grams of flour, and 9 grams of salt. It's that way when I make it every week. And when you do this for years, you know what you're doing right there. So just want to clarify that, that don't panic about your starter. Keep it in your refrigerator. I'm going to be um, giving you some more recipes to use with the starter. Once you start making the granola, you probably won't have an overabundance of discard left. But if you do, add it to your compost bin, feed it to somebody's chickens. It's just good. I mean, I've put it on my dog's food before and they lap it up. They think it's great, but it's good for the gut. And um, I just hear a lot of good things about it. So I hope you appreciate it. See ya.